Hey everybody, another day, another round of bullshit. So today let's get into an article that I was reading that was a little bit interesting when it comes to user-replaceable batteries and devices, and I'll give you some of my thoughts on it. So here I was checking out this website, and it's, it was talking about Apple carries out a number of repairs, uh, iPhone repairs and store these days, but there's one fault that stores are forbidden from touching, and that's a swollen battery. There's just too high a risk that these will be accidentally punctured or in disassembly or removal. And th this is a video of a DIY attempt at replacing a swollen battery in an iPhone 5S that provides a graphic illustration of this. And they're talking about this battery over here, and I will show you that video. So let's take a look at this. It's on my favorite r Reddit over here. Well, that sucks. And the guy is working on a phone. He's working on his phone, and there's a bit of a flash over there. And, well, that's that. And that's obviously something you should never do with a lithium-ion fire, which is step on it. So, after that, he says the battery appears to have been third-party. And uh, he goes on to say the themes from the ion fires are another hazard. So, all told, you don't want to go anywhere near this. Uh, the risk of fire is increased by using batteries, cables, or chargers from unknown brands that may fail to meet the safety standards as those used by Apple and other reputable suppliers. Click the post to watch the video. Now, honestly, it's not a lot of the information that I have a problem with here. It's kind of the phrasing of it. Video shows why Apple doesn't allow in-store replacement of swollen batteries. So, there are a couple of levels the, that this bothers me on. So, the first level that this bothers me on is that the fundamental idea that because there is a very, very small percentage of a chance... And you know damn well who likes to use that vocabulary to defend themselves. Because it's a really small percentage of something bad happening, that we should just not do it when it comes to the fundamental reusability of $1,000 devices. Devices anywhere from $1,000 to dollars to three to four to five to $6,000 now have batteries that are sealed inside the machine, which is 110% an optional choice made by this company that could easily manufacture the device otherwise. They got about two or three hundred billion dollars in the bank. I'm fairly certain that they could figure out how to engineer it with a user removable battery. But this is a choice that they made. And this choice that they made is now adding this danger that is occurring a very small percentage of the time. I don't just mean Apple's silly version of a small percentage. I mean actually a small percentage of the time. And because of that, we're supposed to just Sorry, can't help you. How many gas-related devices do people use in their homes every single day that servicemen come out and work on that could, if done improperly, easily blow up on them? How many of you are driving around a 2,000-pound tank filled with dead dinosaur fluid that could just go if you crash into something or do the wrong thing? There's this old saying that those who would give up liberty or freedom in the pursuit of safety or security deserve neither. And granted, when this statement was made, they were talking about things that were far more important than a lithium-ion battery in your laptop or your smartphone. But it is indeed a saying that applies here. We're asking tens of millions... I'm going I'm to use Apple terminology here for the Apple viewers who are watching, so that hopefully you understand me. We're asking tens of millions of people to give up the liberty and freedom to have the device that they own repaired. We're asking them to give up property rights so that rather than own their device, they rent it because if you can't replace the battery on a device that has a battery, that, that is powered by a battery, then do you really actually own it? We're asking tens of millions of people to give up that property right so that a small percentage, a small percentage of people can avoid the hazard of a lithium-ion battery. And let's face it, when we're talking about those lithium-ion battery fires, you're probably holding it wrong. You, you're probably holding the tool that you used to pop it out wrong. You punctured it. My employee, again, it's my dick move. I was, uh, you know, I messed up his tool. But he did puncture the battery because of something that we did. We were holding it wrong. In this case, the tool. We're asking lots of people to give up freedom and property rights tens of millions so that this very, very small number of people that are, that are taking part in these lithium-ion battery fires can avoid taking part in those or causing those lithium-ion battery fires. Because when you look at the news, when you read the New York Post or the New York Times or the Washington Post or Fox News or CNN or whatever the hell you get your news, you're not seeing stuff like this on the news every day because it doesn't happen that often. There are tens of millions of devices every single day whose lithium-ion batteries are waning and reaching the end of their life, but you have a very, very small number. 
and indeed is a genuinely statistically irrelevant number of these types of fires, yet it is pushed regularly over and over and over again why it is that this type of work cannot be done because it is so dangerous. And again, this is also done in environments where when this fear-mongering occurs, this fear-mongering is it's not focusing on the fact that a fire extinguisher was not nearby or in sight. It's not talking on the fact that there was no fire suppression system in the facility that where this occurred. It's not talking about uh, the safety precautions that should be taken. It's not talking about how when doing this, maybe they wear a certain type of glove or maybe they sit next to a fire extinguisher or maybe it's only done with this type of tool. They're talking about things like, oh, it was a third-party battery and oh, this is why the store can't do it rather than focusing on here's how to do it safely and hey, ma manufacturers, do you really have to be that much of a dick and glue the battery into the effing device that I paid a thousand dollars for. The focus is on the wrong stuff. In the case that these events are a risk, are we supposed to pre pretend that there's no way of mitigating your risk? Are we supposed to pretend that fire suppression systems don't exist? Are we supposed to pretend that with all the effort that Apple puts into their stores that they can't have some sort of DuPont fire suppression system sitting above the bench, much less a fire extinguisher next to the bench or some protective gloves that an individual would wear when specifically working on batteries that have expanded within the device? Is there no precautions that can be taken? The same precautions that we have to come up with in virtually every other industry where we're dealing with consumer items that also have to have some sort of risk when being serviced? The idea that the freedom to have a device repaired should just be boop! Because, oh, look, look, there's like one, one or two news articles a year that show that something bad happened as a result of it that didn't even seem to hurt anybody. Uh, that bothers me. Now, don't get me wrong. Do I want this happening in my shop? No. But how often does that happen in my shop? And also, how hard is it to actually make a battery explode? Just how, what c do you have to do to get a battery to explode? Let's take a look at me trying to remove a battery from an iPhone using some tools that you're not exactly supposed to be using to do so, and let's see how that turns out. Uh, this, is, this is an authorized Rossman repair tool, by the way, so we are going to, yeah, this is a parts phone. I don't got to care how mean I am to it. Uh, let's see what happens here. So I'm not wearing gloves. I'm pretty sure I'll be my hands will just be just fine. And yeah, let's, let's get this battery out of here. So Yeah, we're gonna bend that battery a little bit more than I, I wanted to, but uh come on. Dangerous. Oh yeah. Yeah, fuck. Pinched whatever this thing is. Yeah. Get the fuck out of there. This is yeah, this is really dangerous. This is a regular What's up, Lisa Jackson? Yep, way too dangerous. I don't know how anybody that's following instructions is gonna do this without just effing killing themselves now, aren't they? Vice President of Social Policy, Environmentalism, and Apple fucking Inc., you stupid bitch! Are you fucking kidding me? Too fucking dangerous! Now, the next thing over here is the whole Yes, it was a third-party battery. The battery itself appears to be third-party, as highlighted in the article, and they said that you would want to use batteries and whatnot from known brands, so that, you know, essentially implying that there's a higher likelihood of it going on fire. Now, when it comes to chargers, absolutely, don't get me wrong, I have said many times on this channel that if you buy some three or $6,000 device, and then you decide, I don't want to pay $50 for the good charger, I'm going to buy $10, $10 for the shit charger, I think you're making a bad decision there because because they are made to different standards. That being said, if you puncture lithium, it's going to explode. There's no such thing as IBM branded lithium, Apple branded lithium, Toshiba branded lithium, and then uh, fake knockoff Chinesium branded lithium. If you stab or puncture a lithium ion battery, 
it's going to do that regardless of the logo that's put on it by your favorite brainwashing manufacturer. There's a legitimate argument to be made that bad chargers pose a safety risk. And there is a legitimate argument to be made that bad batteries with bad controllers pose a safety risk. There's also a good argument to be made that in situations like the Note, where the battery is expanding but not given space and whatnot to do so, that this is bad. However, I think it's bad faith to say that, yeah, you got to focus on the brands of the battery so that when you puncture it, it's less likely to, uh, to blow up. Like, no, if you, if you stab a lithium battery, regardless of whose logo is on it, that's what's going to happen. Let's take a look at what happened in our store about five years ago when I borrowed one of my coworkers' tools and I maybe while well, I was doing a MacBook Air bezel look got a little little bit little bent and he was using it to get under a official Apple OEM battery. As can be seen here, the periodic table of the elements does not tend to care much about the brand of the lithium. Physics, chemistry, all of that, it, it just reacts. It doesn't care. It, that's what it's going to do. Even if you are doing this with a normal branded battery, that can happen. That is the only time that has happened in the 10 years that I've been in business. In 10 years, we had that one incident, and that's because I'm kind of a dick co-worker and I didn't notice that I, when I borrowed my co-worker's tool that I kind of fucked it up a little bit while I was working on the device. The third is that when something like this is brought up, what's brought up is why, the, you know, what the focus is typically put on how it is that the, 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 this is why it shouldn't be worked on. This is why third party bad, rather than the focus being put on this is why manufacturers choosing to seal the battery into the product when they don't have to is a dick move. Many of the companies that are sealing batteries into the products have liquid resistance that's only marginally better than it was before they started doing that. And there are companies that have phones that are IP rated with a user removable battery. This, for lack of a better way to put it, is indeed part of a dick waving contest to make a phone a quarter of a half of an eighth of a millimeter thinner so that on their spec sheet it'll look better to product reviewers and, um, and uh, video reviewers and bloggers. And I think it's gotten to a point where it has gone a little bit too far. Many of the companies that are sealing batteries into their products are not doing so because it makes them more liquid resistant. MacBook, need I say more? Well, just watch my channel. It's something that more and more companies are doing when it doesn't really offer much benefit to the end user. Many people will say that I'm being a curmudgeon or I just don't want technology to move forward or I purposely value repairability over all else and I don't want things to move forward. I've always seen that as a bit of a straw man argument. I do like technology moving forward. I do like new features. I do like nicer designs. At the same time, we're talking about the part of the device that determines whether or not I will be able to use it for four or five or six or seven or eight years or whether it, with intensive use cycles, I'm throwing this thing in the garbage after 14 or 15 months. We're also talking about the fact that it's, well, it's not going to be all batteries. It's just the ones that expand. Like almost all lithium ion batteries are going to do if you're continuously using them in the device. If you don't get the battery replaced at some point, many batteries are going to do this. It's rare that you have lithium ion related fires, which is why I think it's more important to focus on how that fire occurred rather than that it simply occurred. Like me telling you that he was using a bent metal tool. He was using a tool that he didn't know had been messed with, or I mean, I'd be kind of interested in what tools are being used here and what mistake was made while moving the battery. I th well, there are a small number of lithium ion related fires like this in the community of repair, 
There are a lot of expanded lithium-ion batteries, and the ratio of repairs on batteries that have expanded to repairs that have resulted in a fire is very much so in favor of fixing the device rather than just trashing it because some other company wants to make more money that day. This is something that does indeed bother me. We're not focusing the coverage on why the battery exploded, nor are we focusing the coverage on the fact that the company putting the battery in the device with industrial adhesive is a dick move, but we're focusing on the fact that, yeah, this is why we don't fix them. This is why it's a bad idea to fix them. This is why it's a bad idea to suggest that the company that made the product actually service it when they charge you top dollar for it. What is there to be gained from using ridiculously high strength adhesive to bond the battery to the machine in something like an A1398 when other companies are able to make slim machines without doing that? It's not a necessary step. And when people make the argument that, well, it, what, my, my waterproof and my waterproofing, A, there are phones that manage to do this without sealing the battery in, but more importantly, Apple's laptops are anything but waterproof. So I don't understand why it is people advocate so harshly against their own interests when it comes to products that they are purchasing that they're spending top dollar for. They're arguing against individuals that are arguing for small concessions to be made so that their experience with the manufacturer, not even with me, with the manufacturer, can be much higher quality. That's what I have to say on this topic. What do you have to say on the topic of batteries expanding, exploding? What do you have to say on the topic of whether or not companies should be servicing these devices? What do you think about the idea that maybe companies should not be sealing the batteries inside every single device that they make? What do you think about companies simultaneously sealing the battery in and then refusing to service them under certain conditions? Do you think that this is something that's really dangerous? Or do you think it's something that's being overblown to push a specific anti-repair narrative? To, um, I'm kind of curious to hear what you all think. And remember, only you can prevent forest fires. I mean, and remember, only you can prevent lithium-ion battery fires. I mean, fuck Apple. Yeah, I've, I, I've, it's like 2 in the morning, so I forgot my catchphrase. I got a little loopy there. Yeah, fuck Apple. That's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something.